Section 10 of The Magic of the Horseshoe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Magic of the Horseshoe by Robert Means Lawrence. The Omens of Sneezing, Part 1. He is a friend at sneezing time. The most that can be got from him is a God bless you. Italian Proverb. Part 1. In ancient times. The ancient Egyptians regarded the head as a citadel, or fortress, in which the reasoning faculty abode. Hence, they especially revered any function seemingly appertaining to so noble a portion of the body, and dignified even the insignificant act of sneezing by attributing to it auguries for good or evil, according to the position of the moon with reference to the signs of the zodiac. The Greeks and Romans also, by whom the most trivial occurrences of everyday life were thought to be omens of good fortune or the reverse, considered the phenomena of sneezing as not the least important in this regard. Homer tells us in the Odyssey that the princess Penelope, troubled by the importunities of her suitors, prayed to the gods for the speedy return of her husband Ulysses. Scarcely was her prayer ended when her son Telemachus sneezed, and this event was regarded by Penelope as an intimation that her petition would be granted. Aristotle said that there was a god of sneezing, and that when in Greece any business enterprise was to be undertaken, two or four sneezes were thought to be favorable. If more than four, the auspices were indifferent, while one or three rendered it hazardous to proceed. About this, however, there appears to have been no unvarying rule. Sneezing at a banquet was considered by the Romans to be especially ominous, and when it unfortunately occurred, some of the viands were brought back to the table and again tasted, as this was thought to counteract any evil effects. The Greeks considered that the brain controlled the function of sneezing. They were therefore as careful to avoid eating this portion of any animal as the Pythagoreans were to avoid beans as an article of diet. It is related that just before the Battle of Salamis, B.C. 480, and while Themistocles, the Athenian commander, was offering a sacrifice to the gods on the deck of his galley, a sneeze was heard on the right hand, which was hailed as a fortunate omen by Euphrantides the soothsayer. Again, it happened once that while Xenophon was addressing his soldiers, referring to the righteousness of their cause and the consequent divine favor which might be expected, someone chanced to sneeze. Pausing in his address, the great general remarked that Jupiter had been pleased to send them a happy omen, and it seemed therefore but right to make an offering to the gods. Then, after all the company had joined in a hymn of thanksgiving, the sacrifice was made, and Xenophon continued with his exhortation. Among the ancients, sneezing to the right was considered fortunate, and to the left, unlucky. In some erotic verses with the title Acme and Septimius by the Roman poet Catullus, B.C. 87-47, to are these lines, twice repeated. Love stood listening with delight, and sneezed his auspice on the right. The omens of sneezing were thought to be of a special significance in lovers' affairs, and indeed the classic poets were wont to say of beautiful women that love had sneezed at their birth. The Italian poet Propertius, while asserting his enduring affection for Cynthia, the daughter of the poet Hostius, thus apostrophizes the chief theme of his eulogies, In thy newborn days, my life, did golden love sneeze loud and clear a favoring omen. The Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans regarded the act of sneezing as a kind of divinity or oracle, which warned them on various occasions as to the course they should pursue, and also foretold future good or evil. Plutarch said that the familiar spirit or demon of Socrates was simply the sneezing either of the philosopher himself or of those about him. If any person in his company sneezed on his right hand, Socrates felt encouraged to proceed with the project or enterprise which he may have had in mind but if the sneeze were on his left hand, he abandoned the undertaking. If he himself sneezed when he was doubtful whether or not to do anything, he regarded it as evidencing the affirmative, but if he happened to sneeze after any work was already entered upon, he immediately desisted therefrom. The demon, we are told, always notified him by a slight sneeze whenever his wife Xantippe was about to have a scolding fit, so that he was thus enabled opportunely to absent himself and in so doing Socrates appears to have given proof, where any needed, of his superior wisdom. For Xantippe had been known to upset the supper-table in her anger, and that too when a guest was present. On a column in the garden of the House of the Fawn at Pompeii, there is a Latin inscription which may be freely translated as follows, Victoria, good luck to thee, and wherever thou wilt sneeze pleasantly. Clement of Alexandria, in a treatise on politeness, characterizes sneezing as effeminate, 
and as a sign of intemperance. Probably the only biblical reference to the subject of sneezing is in 2 Kings 4.35, where the son of the Shunammite sneezed seven times and then revived at the prayer of Elisha. Horapollo, in his treatise on Egyptian hieroglyphics, says that the inhabitants of ancient Egypt believed that the capacity for sneezing was in inverse ratio to the size of the spleen, and they portrayed the dog as the personification of sneezing and smelling because they believed that the animal had a very small spleen. On the other hand, they held that animals with large spleens were unable to sneeze, smell, or laugh, that is, to be open, blithe, or frank-hearted. The function of the spleen in the animal economy is not fully understood today. If the above theory were correct, we should expect that the removal of a dog's spleen would incite excessive sternutation and render more acute the sense of smell, whereas the only marked result of the operation is a voracious appetite. The theory is certainly unique, as well as illogical and absurd. St. Augustine wrote that in his time, so prevalent was faith in the omens of sneezing that a man would return to bed if he happened to sneeze while putting on his shoes in the morning. The learned English prelate Alcuin, 735-804, expressed the opinion that sneezings were devoid of value as auguries, except to those who placed reliance in them. But he further remarked that, quote, it was permitted to the evil spirit, for the deceiving of persons who observe these things, to cause that in some degree prognostics should often foretell the truth. In an ancient Anglo-Saxon sermon, a copy of which is in the library of Cambridge University, England, reference is made to certain superstitions existing among the Saxons before their conversion to Christianity. The writer says, Everyone who trusts in divinations, either by fowls, or by sneezings, or by horses, or dogs, he is no Christian, but a notorious apostate. Part 2. Medieval Beliefs About Sneezing From certain ancient Welsh poems, it appears that sneezing was considered unlucky in Wales in the 12th century, but in Europe generally, in medieval times, the sneeze of a cat on the eve of a wedding was reckoned auspicious. In the writings of the French poet Pierre de Ronsard, 1524-85, the opinion is expressed that not to sneeze while regarding the sun is a sign of ill luck, and from Dr. Hartlieb's Book of All Forbidden Arts, Unbelief, and Sorcery, 1455, we learn that in Germany there was a popular belief that three sneezes indicated the presence of four thieves around the house. Jerome Cardan, the noted Italian philosopher and physician, 1501-76, to in speaking of genii or familiar spirits, remarked that in his opinion sneezing was a supernatural phenomenon, and like the sound of ringing in the ears, was premonitory of some event of importance. Some idea of the credulous notions on the subject of sneezing which were prevalent in England during Queen Elizabeth's reign may be obtained from the following extracts from The Burghley Papers, Lansdowne Manuscript number 121, in the British Museum. 1. If that any man talk with another about any matter, and sneeze twice or four times, let him by and by arise if he be set, or if he be stand, let him move himself, and go straightway without any stays about his business, for he shall prosper. 2. If he sneeze more than four times, let him stay, for it is doubtful how he shall speed. 3. If a man sneeze one or three times, let him proceed no further in any matter, but let all alone, for it shall come to naught. 4. If two men do sneeze both at one instant, it is a good sign, and let them go about their purpose, if that it be by water or land, and they shall prosper. 5. To sneeze twice is a good sign, but to sneeze once or three times is an ill sign. If one comes suddenly into an house and sneeze one time, it is a good token. 6. One sneeze in the night season made by any of the household betokeneth good luck to the house, but if he make two sneezes, it signifieth domage. 7. True it is that he who sneezeth taketh part of the signification in this condition, that he parts some part with other. 8. If that any man sneeze twice three nights together, it is a token that one of the house shall die, or else some great goodness or badness shall happen in the house. 9. If a man go to dwell in an house and sneeze one time, let him dwell there. But if he sneeze twice, let him not tarry, neither let him dwell therein. 10. If a man lie awake in his bed and sneeze one time, it is a sign of some great sickness or hindrance. 11. If a man sleep in his bed and sneeze one time, it betokeneth great trouble, the death of some person, or extreme hindrance in the loss of substance. 12. If a man lie in his bed and make a sneeze one time, it is a good sign, both of health and lucre, but if he sleep, it is much better. 
13. If a man sneeze twice three nights together, it is a good sign whatsoever he go about. 14. If a man travel by the ways and come to an inn and sneeze twice, let him depart out of the house and go to another, or else he shall not prosper. 15. If a man go forth to seek work and lay hands of it, and then sneeze one time, let him depart, leaving his work behind him and seek work elsewhere, and so shall do well. But if he sneeze twice, let him take his work and go no further. 16. If any man, after he have made a bargain with another for anything, and then sneeze one time, it signifieth that his bargain will not continue. 17. If a man rise betimes on a Monday morning out of his bed and sneeze one time, it is a token that he shall prosper and gain all that week, or have some other joy and commodity. 18. But if he sneeze twice, it is clean contrary. 19. If a man lose a horse or anything else, and is stopping out of his door to seek it, do sneeze one time, it is a token that he shall have it again. But if he sneeze twice, he shall never have it again. 20. If a man rise betime on a Sunday and sneeze two times, it is a good token. But if he sneeze one time, it is an ill token. 21. If a man at the very beginning of dinner or supper be minded to eat and sneeze twice, it is a good token. But if he sneeze one time, it is an ill sign. 22. If a man lies sick in bed and mistrust himself and sneeze one time, it is a token of death. But if he sneeze twice, he shall escape. 23. A woman being very sick, if she sneeze one time, it is a sign of health. But if she sneeze twice, she shall die. Part 3. Modern Superstitions About Sneezing Sneezing at the commencement of an undertaking, whether it be an important enterprise or the most commonplace act, has usually been accounted unlucky. Thus, according to a modern Teutonic belief, if a man sneeze on getting up in the morning, he should lie down again for another three hours, else his wife will be his master for a week. So likewise the pious Hindu, who may perchance sneeze while beginning his morning ablutions in the river Ganges, immediately recommences his prayers and toilet. And among the Alfurans, or aborigines of the island of Celebes in the Indian archipelago, if one happens to sneeze when about leaving a gathering of friends, he at once resumes his seat for a while, before making another start. When a native of the Banks Islands in Polynesia sneezes, he imagines that someone is calling his name, either with good or evil intent, the motive being shown by the character of the sneeze. Thus a gentle sneeze implies kindly feeling on the part of the person speaking of him, while a violent paroxysm indicates a malediction. In the latter case, he resorts to a peculiar form of divination in order to ascertain who it is that curses him. This consists in raising the arms above the head and revolving the closed fists one around the other. The revolution of the fists is the question, is it such an one? Then the arms are thrown out, and the answer, presumably affirmative, is given by the cracking of the elbow joints. In Scotland, even educated people have been known to maintain that idiots are incapable of sneezing, and hence, if this be true, the inference is clear that the act of sternutation is prima facie evidence of the possession of a certain degree of intelligence. British nurses used to think that infants were under a fairy spell until they sneezed. "'God sain the bairn!' exclaimed an old Scotch nurse when her little charge sneezed at length. "'It's not a warlock!' The Irish people also entertained similar beliefs. Thus, in Lady Wilde's Ancient Cures, Charms, and Usages of Ireland, page 41, is to be found the following description of a magical ceremony for the cure of a fairy-stricken child. A good fire is made, wherein is thrown a quantity of certain herbs prescribed by the fairy women, and after a thick smoke has risen, the child is carried thrice around the fire while an incantation is repeated, and holy water is sprinkled about liberally. Meantime, all doors must be closed, lest some inquisitive fairy enter and spy upon the proceedings, and the magical rites must be continued until the child sneezes three times, for this looses the spell, and the little one is permanently redeemed from the power of witches. Among uncivilized peoples, the sneeze of a young child has a certain mystic significance, and is intimately associated with its prospective welfare or ill luck. When, therefore, a Maori infant sneezes, its mother immediately recites a long charm of words. If the sneeze occurs during a meal, it is thought to be prognostic of a visit or of some interesting piece of news, whereas in Tonga it is deemed an evil token. So, too, among the New Zealanders, if a child sneezes on the occasion of receiving its name, the officiating priest at once holds to its ear the wooden image of an idol and sings some mystic words. In a note appended to his Mountain Bard, 
The Ettrick Shepherd says, regarding the superstitions of Selkirkshire, When they sneeze in first stepping out of bed in the morning, they are thence certified that strangers will be there in the course of the day, in numbers corresponding to the times they sneeze. It was a Flemish belief that a sneeze during a conversation proved that what one said was the truth, a doctrine which must have commended itself to snuff-takers. In Shetlandic and Welsh folklore, the sneeze of a cat indicates cold north winds in summer and snow in winter. And the Bohemians have an alleged infallible test for recognizing the devil, for they believe that he must perforce sneeze violently at the sight of a cross. According to a Chinese superstition, a sneeze on New Year's Eve is ominous for the coming year, and to offset this, the sneezer must visit three families of different surnames and beg from each a small tortoise-shaped cake, which must be eaten before midnight. In Turkestan, when a person to whom a remark is addressed sneezes, it is an asseveration that the opinion or statement is correct, just as if the person accosted were to exclaim, that is true. In the same country, three sneezes are unlucky. When also anyone hiccups, it is etiquette to say, you stole something from me, and this phrase at such times is supposed to produce good luck. The Japanese attach significance to the number of times a man sneezes. Thus, one sneeze indicates that someone is praising him, while two betokens censure or disparagement. A triple sneeze is commonplace and means simply that a person has taken cold. In Mexico also, it was formerly believed either that somebody was speaking evil of one who sneezed, or that he was being talked about by one or more persons. Sussex people are prejudiced against cats which develop sneezing proclivities, for they believe that when a pet feline sneezes thrice it augurs ill for the health of the household, and is premonitory of influenza and bronchial affections. In an interesting article in Macmillan's magazine entitled From the Notebook of a Country Doctor, a physician practicing in a remote part of Cornwall tells of a peculiar cure for deafness which recently came to his notice. One of his patients, an elderly woman whose name was Grace Rickard, complained that she could no longer hear the grunting of her pigs, a sound which from childhood had roused her from sleep in the early morning. The doctor was obliged to tell her that the difficulty was due to advancing years. A short time after, on calling at her house, he found her sitting before the fire with a piece of board in her lap, and deeply absorbed in thought. Just as the door opened, she exclaimed, "'Lord, deliver me from my sins!' And this petition was followed by a peculiar noise which sounded like an abortive sneeze. "'Don't be frighted, sir,' she said. "'Tis only a sneeze.' "'It's the oddest sneeze I ever heard,' said the doctor. "'Why can't you sneeze in the ordinary way?' "'So I do when I can,' she explained. "'But now tis got up to nine times running, "'and wherever to get nine sneezes from is more than I know.' "'It appeared that Grace was making trial "'of an infallible cure for deafness, "'the necessary apparatus for which "'consisted of a piece of board and some stout pins.' One of the latter is stuck into the board every morning, the patient's forefingers being crossed over the pin, while the pious ejaculation above mentioned is repeated simultaneously with a vigorous sneeze. On the next morning, two pins must be stuck in the board, the petition and sneeze being once repeated. On the following morning, three pins, three prayers, and three sneezes, and so on up to nine times. End of section 10 of 